Hi everyone, my name is Anna and I'm the head of data science at ICA. I'm here with my two brilliant colleagues, Marit, data governance lead, and Sarah, data scientist. And we work together at ICA to make responsible AI happen. And we're here today to talk about responsible AI in retail and why this subject is so important. So report after report are showing us that consumer trust is at risk when it comes to digitalization, data and AI. For example, only 25% of Swedish consumers believe that Swedish retail companies have the capacity to process their data safely and securely. 44% are worried that the personal information that they share in digital forums are being used for things that they aren't comfortable with. And as many as 67% think that the increased use of personal data is something generally negative. These numbers are showing us that we need to take action and today we are going to talk about how. But let's start with some insights from research on this area. We want to mention three key things in relation to data and AI in our sector. First, we see a general deviation between what consumers think about data collection and how they actually behave. Consumers are generally skeptical and hesitant towards sharing data and being subject to algorithms when asked about it, but they still use services and products that does exactly that. So some researchers are suggesting that what's going on is that consumers are resignating, giving up on aligning their values and behavior due to feeling so powerless in this area. And this means that consumers using a service or even actually actively consenting to data collection cannot be taken as a complete sign of trust for a company. And the risk here is that people's resignation harms the market in the long term. Traditionally, trust is a fundamental mechanism in trade and in retail specifically, and distrust in retail companies risks creating a backlash where consumers don't want to share data at all or to a lesser extent, which could harm innovation and growth for us. Thirdly, regulations in this area have been very focused on the individual, giving the individual consumer more rights and increasing the individual consumer's data literacy. Now, more and more researchers ask for a more structural approach where consumers aren't burdened with the task of fully understanding the AI system that they interact with. These two different solutions, the individual and the more structural, in practice pose quite different challenges for companies, and we're going to have to deal with both. So to start with, what even is responsible AI? There are many efforts to define this, and we're going to mention four aspects. First, AI systems need to be transparent and explainable. In practice, there's a ton of research focusing on opening up the black box and allowing those who are implementing or being subject to an AI model to better understand how it's working. In practice, though, in companies where data isn't the main source of revenue, this comes down to an ambition of having more parts of the organization understand what is today mostly limited to the developers. So luckily, measures to ensure transparency for consumers often aligns with the business wanting to understand the models before they implement them. Secondly, for the retail sector, everything we do is centered around the customer. For AI to be responsible, Consumers need to have some level of both overview and control of how their data is used and how they're affected by models. Many algorithms already aim at nudging the customer's behavior and responsible AI must be able to do that with the involvement of the customer. Essentially, the customer need to be able to make sure that the AI model's predictions are aligned with their own personal goals. And that can only happen if the customer can exercise some kind of control over what data they share and what it is used for. Thirdly, responsible AI needs to be fair, meaning it doesn't enhance or preserve 
social hierarchies based on gender, ethnicity, ability, or other kinds of discrimination. And this is both a data issue, it's an organizational issue, and it's a technical issue. And research in this area often suggests measures that aren't really doable in practice. For example, proper fairness evaluations of AI models often requires data on sensitive attributes, which most Swedish retail companies luckily doesn't have access to. But this means that we need to work harder with risk analysis, identifying potential sources of discrimination and deal with them throughout the whole modeling process. And with benevolence, we mean that responsible AI must be built with good intent so that an AI system is truly worthy of the trust. So it's not just about how we build the algorithms, but also what we build them for, just and legitimate missions truly benefiting the customer. And lastly, there will be no responsible AI without accountability. How accountability structures we look and work is still being developed at most companies, but it's both an external and an internal issue. And it's both about direct accountability to consumers and accountability through authorities. We'll come back to this issue later on in the presentation, but a key here is to know what is going on. And for that, it all starts with the data. So I think it's fair to say that the consumers are obviously not experiencing a great amount of trust. How can we as a company then help build that trust towards our customers? We believe that this can be achieved through conscious decisions on how data is used and establishing control to ensure that data is not misused. We have a structured approach to this through data governance. It all starts with defining accountability for data, making sure that we make those conscious decisions around who is allowed to do what with which data. But there's also a practical side to data governance, so-called orchestration of resources, establishing standardized processes so that we can utilize technology to raise the efficiency of our governance. ICA's guiding principles of data governance go beyond formal laws and regulations and build on our principles and values, which are very focused on ensuring that we always keep our customer focus, protecting our customers' integrity and working our hardest to always provide them with the best service on the market. Our customer surveys actually indicate that we're rather successful in this. The latest survey revealed that 63% of our customers are generally positive to us collecting data about them so that we can offer more relevant services. So for us, the challenge might not be so much creating that trust, but more maintaining the trust. In practice, this means a whole lot of collaboration. We develop our business through cross-functional teams with representation from IT, data management, analytics, and of course, the business in their role as the data owners. As an example, we have a team focusing on customer communication. That is a great example of collaboration between business and IT. The business is in charge of the customer master data and the definition of new customer facing communication. We have a recommendation engine that's analyzing the customer's purchasing behavior and making recommendations based on this. But the decision of what recommendations are actually used is taken care of by the business, whereas the technology is built by a technical team with data engineers, data architects, and data scientists working together. Also, our information security department is heavily involved in daily business, ensuring that our customers' integrity is protected at all times. We have specific roles called data protection managers and data protection guardians that are an active resource tied to all development projects involving the use of customer data, thereby not only ensuring compliance, but making sure that the customer focus is maintained throughout the process. 
Now, according to GDPR, the customer has always the right to demand an extract of all data that we keep on them. They also have the right to demand that we remove all customer records of them. We believe that this transparency is an important factor in our customers' continued will to share their data with us. But we believe that an even more important factor is the level of improved services that our customers receive as a result of sharing data. As an example of that, our loyalty customers get concrete payback through discounts on the products that they purchase the most. In fact, our customers are sometimes requesting whether we might be able to handle even further information about them, such as allergies or dietary preferences. So we could be providing even better service going forward. This is, however, sometimes conflicting with the overall laws and regulations, even if the individual customer might wish for that. This is also where we, as a business, need to be um, a capable information security department that can help us balance the risk of conflicts with the customer's will and valid laws. Overall, this is a challenging balance act to maintain. But is it enough that our customers trust in us at IKEA? Wouldn't we all benefit if customers in general can share their data and trust that these questions are being handled well, no matter which company? One way of creating a system based on trust is with the help of regulations, such as the new EU regulations that describe different AI risk systems. There are unacceptable risk AI systems, such as technology that evaluates an individual's trustworthiness based on predicted personality traits. Then we have high risk AI systems, such as models that evaluate consumer creditworthiness. And then it's limited and minimal risk AI systems, which are applications such as AI powered inventory management. In retail, these missions are very interesting. From an AI governance perspective, we are not likely to have systems classified as high risk because we are mostly not impacting decisions with very high direct consequence. But on the other hand, decisions around consumption have very large long term effects for people, both on their economy and on their health. There are multiple small decisions, <clears throat> such as what drink to buy, what loaf of bread to buy, whether to buy that chocolate on sale or not. But these are decisions we make often. So what is then the mission for AI in retail? Supporting the healthy options at risk of moralizing over people's own choices. Not promoting healthy options, but rather maintaining people's habits at risk of contributing to a growing inequality of health. What's very clear is that there is no neutral option. To a lesser and lesser extent, companies will be able to just blame the system. Instead, any system and its consequences will need to be overseen in some way. And this is why data governance is so important and why we all have to continue working together with our customers to understand what they want. If we develop models that increase this trust, we create a win-win situation, both for us and our customers. So there is a business value in being governed by the need to maintain this trust. And we want to finish with two key messages for making a responsible AI happen in the real world. The first is that AI will never be responsible if it's just a set of principles decided in the beginning of a process or a checklist before deployment. Usually we struggle because it never seems like a very good time to discuss the social or ethical issues. Early on, we can't answer if we could have used less data or if the model is unfair to some groups because we simply do not know yet. Before deployment, Learning that a variable is too sensitive to use can require total pivot back to the exploratory phase. 
instead efforts for discussing and ensuring responsibility measures for the models must be a continuous process taking place alongside the whole development process. Second, responsible AI needs to be a collaborative process. To ensure transparency and accountability, we require many different perspectives to come together. Decisions around data usage and modeling cannot be made solely by the developer or data scientist. Neither can it be made by the business operations alone. Instead, accountability requires bringing legal, social and technical perspectives together. In practice, that means that people with different professional backgrounds need to work together so that the risks can be discovered, analysed and mitigated. Thank you so much for listening to us today. My name is Anna and I'm here together with my brilliant colleagues, Marit and Sarah, and we work together at ICA to make responsible AI actually happen.